my gosh, I can't believe it. I like, I'm the worst of technology. I was about to throw this computer out the window. <laughs> no, no, no. That is honestly okay. I, I mean, it's no big deal. Um, <laughs> It will be fine. Um, I, I figured to get it working because um, I've had the other people who I've done this with. They haven't. They've been. They've had issues with technology too, and we always work it out. So don't worry. Yeah, it, it, it worked out, so it's all good. <laughs> How are you? Well, I'm doing well. Hey, you you look great. Um, it's. I don't oh, think we actually haven't done a video chat. You and I haven't. So this is kind of No, I feel I feel like it's definitely was 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 time for that to happen for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, we've talked so much on online but never in person. Right. So it's right. kinda nice right. to finally do that. Right. Okay. Well I, I'm just trying to, I'm I, trying to get onto the you the YouTube page one second here. Okay, yeah. I know that right now, because I've been trying to watch, I know that there's um a few viewers and I know I've sent out the link um, if, if nice. so, so so even if we don't get a whole lot of people I usually I've done these now I think this is the third one I've done and people people do tend to um, watch later yeah they do tend to watch later so even if we don't get a lot of people right at the moment there yeah, that's fine will, there will be people that will watch it later and they'll kind of see the edited version which is which is nice i can cut out because well well because what i do is i start the broadcast a little bit earlier right just so that i make sure that i get all the kinks worked out <laughs> and i hear ya. so then you want to get that part out of the way <laughs> right, right right but well it is so good i am so excited about uh date my dad that has been so great yeah but, it's been it's been really amazing i uh Honestly, from the get-go, just being a part of the show and uh, just getting the part and then actually shooting it, which was like a dream come true. And then just actually knowing that people are watching it and being receptive to it is just, I don't know, it's always so weird. You know, you make this show, anything you work on, you work on it. But then when people actually see it, it's like, it's real. When you're doing it, I don't know, it's, it's a very strange feeling when people actually get to see your work. It's, it's very uh, humbling and, and really exciting. Right, I, I I know how that is. I don't know it from an actor standpoint, but I know that when I spend all this time getting a blog post together, interview together, and I put it up, and then people start interacting with it, and they read it, they respond to it. it, it it's it's a really neat experience. So, so yeah, I can I can see that for sure. Yeah. So for anyone who is joining us, of course, people will be joining us later. But I know we have. A few people that are joining us now. So, for those who are joining us, I have with me today Cindy Busby. Hi. <laughs> and some of you probably know her from Hallmark Channel, um, and uh, also, of course, uh, the Up Channel with her show that's that's airing right now. Date my dad. In fact, it will be airing tonight. Yes, Friday okay. night, nine Eastern. Yes, and that is so awesome. Um, that has made. Actually, Date My Dad has become the thing to watch on Friday night. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen that. You know, it's sometimes you, you think maybe Friday night won't be a popular night to watch TV, but I feel like after a long week uh, of work, people get home and they just want to watch something that's going to be entertaining with their family. And I really think that that's what Date My Dad has kind of done for Friday nights for a lot of people. And I feel that that's so special because I know when I was young, I used to watch TGIF all the time on Friday nights, which I loved. And I looked forward to it every single week. And it was like two hours of just like me time with my family and my brother. And um, so I'm happy that Day My Dad can do that for, for a lot of people. Right, because when, when I started watching this, um, after I saw the pilot and then this, because actually it was the pilot and then the, the next show, they had two shows yeah. back to back the first, the first night. Yep. And when I watched yeah. it, I told my mom, there is really nothing like this on TV right now. It's like um, back, like uh, you're talking about TGIF. Yeah, I grew up watching TGIF too. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and there were those family sitcoms that the whole family could sit down and watch together. You didn't have to worry about there being 
violence or mm -hmm. lots of bad languages or these, you know, these bedroom scenes that, you know, it's like you didn't want the little kids to see or something. Nobody, nobody <laughs> needs to be watching your parents, you know what I mean? <laughs> Right. Right. And so that was just really neat to see something. I thought you you guys are really with this show are recreating something that we don't really have anymore. And I, I could not agree more. And I, and I don't personally have kids at the moment, but I have friends that do. And it's funny because one of my best friends, um, she watches it with her little daughter that just turned one. And, you know, and her daughter doesn't watch a lot of TV, but they have their once a week where they, they sit down and watch Date My Dad. And she always sends me a little video. She's like, and they, she calls me Aunt Buzz. And she's like, look, it's Aunt Buzz on the TV. And her daughter's like one and she's just got the biggest eyes and she's so excited. And for me, that is like the greatest gift. If my, one of my best friends can watch it with her one year old, like that is incredible. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so. The question that, that that I have, so how did you get the opportunity? How did this come about for you to be to become a part of the show? Um, well, I I personally have always wanted to work on uh, some sort of comedy. That's always been my passion. I love it so much, uh, in case you can't already tell, um, from just like, you know, my social media stuff. And um I it, I think it was November of last year, beginning of November, I got this audition and I remember reading the material and thinking like, wow, I really connect with this. And, and she had a voice, like as soon as I read the lines, I she had a voice in my head, the role of Stephanie, and I could hear it so clearly. And that doesn't happen all the time when you get auditions for things. And I really connected with her and I was like, you know what, whatever happens, like I feel really close to this character. So I went in um, and I remember auditioning for it and it going really well and leaving there and, and seeing a lot of my peers that I know really well in town that are also actresses and and just, you know, wishing them the best, but knowing that I had done a good job and done everything that I could. And then I think it was about a month later, maybe a little bit less, and my agent called me and I was going to go uh, to the States to go meet my boyfriend for Christmas. And she said hey, um, they're having a callback slash chemistry reads for Day My Dad. Are you still going to be in town because they'd like to see you? And it, it, had, it was on the Friday and I was leaving on the Sunday. So I was like, oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. I will be there. So she's like, awesome. So then I was all, I was getting really excited and I worked really hard and I went in and actually Barry flew into Vancouver uh, just for the day to read, chemistry read, uh, the part of Stephanie and the part of the daughters, which, by the way, really doesn't happen very often. There aren't a lot of actors out there that will really go out of their way to come in and read with actors or actresses um, to see, is there chemistry? Is this going to work? Because that's such a vital part to making any show um, successful is the chemistry and the energy between them. And can you bring that and obviously in an audition situation, you know, there's nerves and there's there's all uh, kinds of things involved. But I went in, I got to meet Barry and from the get go, he was so lovely and so welcoming. And it's also nice because he knows what it's like to audition. So you could see that he was wanting to make it as pleasant as possible for every person coming in the room. And uh, and I went in and I felt a really great connection with him. And, and I thought that everything went really well. And and um, you know the producers and the director was there, and I left the audition being like, you know what, whatever happens, happens, because you never know. There's so many people, cooks in the kitchen when it comes to getting roles that you can never just take anything too seriously. And I think it was probably a week and a half later that I uh, was with my boyfriend. It's funny, we were at a, a gas station, and my agent called me, and, and she's like, hold on, I've got Mike on the line, which is my manager, and usually when they call me together, it's with good news. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? But I had auditioned a lot, so I didn't know what it was. And then they told me the great news that I'd gotten the part. And I just like started, I just started crying and I started laughing and my boyfriend's like pumping the gas <laughs> and he looks through the car window and he like smiles at me and he just sees tears like streaming down my face and he doesn't know what's going on. And I was like, and he's like, 
what, what's, and he's like pumping gas, wondering, and then finally gets in the car and, and I'm on the phone and he's like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I hang up and I was like, oh my gosh, I booked in my dad. And he was like, what? And he just gave me a big hug. And it was just like, it was such a beautiful Christmas gift. It was, it was such a blessing and I was so thankful. And that's really how it came to be. You know, it's just the stars aligned and I, uh, I've been just so, so grateful ever since. Wow. That's, yeah. Well, that was a great Christmas gift then. That's, that's really yeah. cool. That's, yeah, it was a great gift. <laughs> that's about the best gift that you could have to have to not only to book a role, but to book a role on a comedy series and you've been wanting to do comedy. I mean, that's just, that's so cool. I know it's yeah. I, I still like, can't even believe it happened. I'm yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah, because uh, when when you booked that, when I finally found out that you were part of it, because I, I people started telling me I'd, I'd interviewed some people here and there, and they'd say, "Oh, well, I'm going to be on the show, date my dad." And it seemed like every time I turned around, I was hearing this person's in it, and this person's in it, and this person's in it, and the list kept going on. And then it's like Cindy Busby's in it. Oh my! I was I was so excited for you. Yeah, it was kind of. I, I think I was waiting a little while just to be. You know, you, you don't, I don't personally like to talk about things until like things are like set in stone um, because you never know what can happen. And so basically I waited till the day I was on, like, the, I think the next day after my first day on set. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to like post something about it just to let everyone know what the heck I've been up to. So yeah. It was right. So now with the character of Stephanie, yes. now how, how are you like her and how are you different than her? Um, oh, that's a good question. I think, I think that I'm like her in the sense of her work ethic. I think that she's a very, um, strong worker. She takes her job really seriously. She's going to school at the same time. So she's juggling a lot of things, which I tend to do as well. I'm juggling a lot of things at once, but you know, that's part of the game. And, um, and so I would, I would take that, you know, her seriousness about, being the best she can be all the time and not always getting it right, but always at least trying to get it right. Um, and then also just her sense of humor. I think like her kind of her dry humor and her uh, sense of sarcasm and, and not taking again, anything too seriously. Um, I probably say the fact that she's a trainer is different than me because if I, I literally have to drag my butt out of bed to like work out. So we probably have that that's not in common. And then I'd probably say, I mean, I've had my fair share of bad dates, I would say, but I definitely, I, I haven't had her struggles in the past. Um, so there's that. That uh, I've definitely been more, I've, she's like a pretty big dater who kind of like, meets a bunch of bunch of guys but can't really settle down with one of them whereas i feel like i've been quite monogamous in my life and haven't been someone who just dates around and doesn't settle down so i'd probably say those are the biggest differences okay yeah because i uh, i mean from because from the beginning it seemed like you really connected with the character you know how sometimes when a show is starting like when we watch the pilot Sometimes it takes a little while for the character, for the actors to get into their roles. You know, not that they're not good, but it's just trying to find themselves. Oh, sure. and the but with you, it was just like, because I, I remember telling my mom, it's like you from the beginning seem to have this really strong connection with, with Stephanie. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't, you know what? I think that it's also about how I've just grown a lot in the last year and a half personally and therefore professionally. And I think that I just have learned to connect better with myself. And because I've connected better with myself on a deeper level, I feel that I'm able to connect the dots with the characters that come to me. Because I really do think that it's all about timing and I think that it's all about what's best for you in that moment. And you know, I feel like there's stages that actors go through on the types of things that they book according to what's going on in their life. And I like, you know, and they say, um, uh, what's the saying? Uh, oh man, I can't believe it. I can't remember. But anyway, the, the idea of, of, of uh, art, art imitating life and life imitating art. 
yes, that whole thing. So yeah. I think that has something to do with it as well. And I just think, I think her groundedness, her, her sense of humor is probably, and her work ethic is probably what I just connected with. And then also just the people I get to work with, I think we just connected like immediately. And that makes all the difference if you can feel grounded from the get go. Because because I know you've shared um, on social media about how much fun you guys have behind the scenes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you saw the blooper reel, the mini blooper reel recently. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> so are there any um, behind the scenes um, stories? I mean, I know you shared some. I realize that. But is there anything that comes to mind that's like a really special memory or you know or a really funny memory um that stands out um, so i mean it gets to the point where there's so many things that you're just like you can't even think of one thing um i'd probably say something that was really special was on one of our lunch hours um probably at the end of march i think it was uh the product the producers put together a they put together the pilot it was a rough cut and so it hadn't been color corrected or the sound hadn't been done, but, and the credits weren't done, but they sat us all down and they put a projector up and we got to watch it all with the cast and crew together. And everyone like had their lunches and we're eating lunch, watching the show. And, oh, and it was like, everyone was laughing and, you know, I, I was like tearing up and so were, you know, and so was a lot of people and they've been working on it, you know, and they saw it live and in real time. And now we're watching it. And that was really special to share that with the cast and crew because, you know, so many times you're making something and you don't know what it's going to be like. And then you have the opportunity of seeing the final product with the people you've made it with. And that to me was such a special moment to share that with everyone. And then I feel like the rest of the day, everyone knew what they, what they had made together. And it kind of connected us on a deeper level, which I really enjoyed. And I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give props to the crew on the show because, you know what, they work day in and day out. They're there from the beginning to the end, and you know, along with Barry, Barry was probably the one who was in everything, uh, the only cast member that was in everything, and they were always in such great moods. And anytime maybe they were like, maybe they were having an off day, we'd be shooting in the gym, and I know that a lot of like the the camera guys would just be like. Oh, we just love days in the gym. Like it's always fun and lighthearted because like the scenes in the gym are just crazy. <laughs> like they're so silly and out there. And uh, and and Maddie Finocchio plays Alan. I mean, I've talked about it before, but like that guy just kills me. He is so funny. Me and Barry will be doing scenes and we'll just be looking at each other, like trying not to pee our pants laughing. Like it's just so fun. So <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. I mean, it's it, those those scenes in the gym. I mean, I love all the scenes, but those scenes in the gym are always like, you know, they're going to the gym. There's going to be all this funny stuff. I mean, you just yeah. know that that's going to happen. So, so that's, yeah, that's they, fun. Yeah, they have that lightheartedness that right. to the show that, you know, there are some really deep, um, con there is some deep content on the show. So it's I think it's important to always sugarcoat with a little bit of humor, as humans do when anything, when times are tough. That's comedy is usually what we turn to, you know, and I, I think that's why it's so important to me. Right. That, I, I would agree completely. Now, the thing that also I've really noticed on the show, there's a lot of a lot of women, I guess I would say, involved in this show. And that's and that's something cool. I love seeing that because sometimes you don't see show you, you see shows. I mean, not that I have anything against there being strong guys and cast and stuff. I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's neat to see women, strong women being featured. Yeah. Uh, but were there ever, how did the guys in the cast deal? Because I'm thinking, yeah, you know, there's you, who I would consider very strong woman. Thank you. You have, you have the three girls who um, I've actually interviewed all three girls. And, yeah. And I mean, they're, you know, they're very, I mean, they're, they're pretty strong. And, you know, then, then you, ha I mean, then you have, Raquel Welch. I mean, you have all these really <laughs> strong yeah. women, and then you have the guys. And how did 
how do they deal with having all these because sometimes men are intimidated by strong women I, and i'm sure that the men who are involved with the cast were not like that but how did they deal with all these strong women involved um, um i think it was really well was embraced you know i think uh i on i i really believe that the lead of any show sets the tone for uh any series or any movie and and that's something i've done anytime i've been the lead of something i take great pride in creating such a really great environment and creating a lot of positivity and in times that aren't always easy and aren't always positive sometimes you got to take deep breaths and just and just be in the moment and know that you know what it's it's not brain surgery here we're creating we're, we get to play characters for a living you know what i mean but Barry really did that on this show. He set a tone, and I, I think that from the get-go, Barry has a really strong relationship with his wife, uh, who is like a force to be reckoned with, is such a lovely woman, and has a daughter himself. So I think that's also, uh, he has two sons and a daughter, and I think having a daughter has really taught him even more, I think he's talked about this in interviews as well, is how much having a daughter has taught him even more about women. Even though she's she's quite young, you see it from a young age that women, that little girl, like little girls and little boys are so different in that way. And I think he has such a love and respect for women that that set a tone. And the creator of the show is a woman, Nina Coleman. So that in itself sets, and Nina is like, is if i may is such a badass woman like she is so awesome like when she shows up on set she's fun she's like you don't want to mess with her like she is just cool and she knows what she's talking about and she's gone through all of it she's done you know she's had great successes and great losses and but all of that makes you a better person and i i, I don't know i just really think that those two um and then you know the uh, barbara fisher who um takes care of us on up tv she is also incredible and would come to set a lot would fly in from la and um yeah so i i just i think that the people that set the tone for the show were really dominant females or great feminists such as barry and i think that that just made everybody like if they weren't huge advocates of women they had to pretend to be because it would not fly so to be honest and then there's obviously raquel welsh who you know you don't know when when a woman like that shows up on set i think a lot of people were kind of like what is it going to be like like how is she going to be what is her attitude going to be and like she's so sweet she's so quiet she's you know she really keeps to herself she's very He's very polite, always says hello to everyone. Like, you know what I mean? So that really like just also set a tone because when, you know, a Hollywood legend shows up and is Raquel Welsh, this like babelicious woman, I don't care how old she is, like, hello, thank you. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I think, I think that uh, I, I feel really proud to be on a very like woman, headstrong kind of show. That's uh, that's a blessing, right? Well, and and I think I think I kind of knew. I mean, I I knew that it was good, that these guys had to be okay with all these women, but I just but hearing it but hearing it from your perspective that just helps me understand. Well, that's why the shows the show works so well, yes. and and that's and that's great. I, I you mentioned Raquel Welch. I mean, I look at that one. I think she is so amazing. She looks so amazing. Yeah. I I mean, I'm thinking. Uh, I, I mean, it doesn't go out, go without, you know, if, if anything, she's a prime example of like someone who, like of what you can look like if you take care of yourself, you know? Uh, so there's that. And of yeah. course, you know, the living in a bit of, of luxury and things of that nature. <laughs> but she's definitely had an incredible life. So that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I It was, it was, because so, when I found out she was a part of it, I was like, oh my goodness you know like that was just a really big deal and so that yeah. was that, that, I remember when i um when i did the first read through with the cast i was doing it via skype because i was in la at the time and i i remember everyone saying hi to me because i didn't know everyone who was part of the cast yet like i hadn't met 
And I remember right in front of the camera, I couldn't see all of the cats. Like they said hi to me, but then they'd sit in their seats. I, I remember Raquel sitting right in front of the camera and she was the first person I saw. And I was just like, Raquel Welch is in this in my head. And I remember my boyfriend was away and he'd just come in. And I remember writing on a piece of paper from him. I was like, Raquel Welch is playing Abuela and, and like handing it to him. So like, I wouldn't, you know, be too obvious. And, uh, and he was like, really? Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. Right. There is actually a fan question. This is cool. So uh, from, from James Clark. Oh, hi, James. He's, He's asking, hi. what does Cindy do in her off time to relax? <laughs> I feel like he's asked me this on uh, on Twitter before. Um, you know, to, to start off, I love what I do so much that to me, as hard work as it can be and how time consuming it can be, it's so much fun that like, I enjoy every minute of it, so therefore I find that relaxing. You know what I mean? Like when you love something so much, it's easy to do. But I would say the things I do to actually relax are uh, work out, um, because I really think creating, like letting go of that energy gets rid of anxiety, creates endorphins. Uh, that's really important to me. Working out, doing some, sort, uh, some form of physical activity. Uh, I really enjoy meditating. That's something that is a big part of my life. If it's not for two minutes, it's for 15 minutes or a half an hour, but I really try to fit that in into my daily routine. Um, and then just thing, like socializing. I love socializing with people. I'm important uh, to me. Um, I love, you know, eating out, having a good time. I love eating and eating. <laughs> I basically work out to eat. Um, I uh, I also really love reading. I love writing. Uh, but of course, when I am working, I don't have a lot of time for those things. But it's um it's finding the time to to meditating and like grounding myself. Those things are really important. And then sometimes it's just as easy as going to get uh, a massage or a pedicure, or little things like that, just to like feel girly again and kind of reset myself. Okay. Oh, yeah. that, that 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 all sounds really good. That that's simple things. It's it's all in the simplicity, you know. I really would like to travel more. My uh, my my boyfriend and I are trying to plan a European vacation right now, so we're we're kind of trying to make that happen. So that's going to be because he works a lot as well. So we're trying to take that time for ourselves. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that would, that would be exciting to do. I, I, I understand traveling yeah. is traveling takes, takes some um, planning and probably not always that easy being an, being an actor and trying to plan time to actually, because, because you get to travel for your job. So I mean, it sounds great. You know, you get to go different places, but you don't always get to go and vacation <laughs> exactly yeah you'll have like one day off and you'll visit but you're like brain dead basically <laughs> we're working on your work that's coming up so there's never there's not a lot of downtime for sure your brain is like in work mode it's like go 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 all the time right right um so now with with going back to your character stephanie yeah because it seems like she, oh, she she has that thing of, you know, tr of course, trying to find the perfect date for her, but she also is always counseling her, her boss about <laughs> you know, what kind of person he should be looking for. Yeah. So as, as Stephanie, what kind of person do you think he would be perfect for him? If you had to pick someone out as your character, who, what kind of person would what does he need, do you think? Um, I think she would have to be someone who obviously loves kids. Uh, someone who is also career driven, but also takes um, time for, for herself. Uh, I think he needs a strong woman, a woman who can kind of hold her own in a discussion. Uh, I think someone who's physically active because he is as well. That's a big part of his life. 
Um, maybe she has kids or maybe she doesn't. I don't know. Uh, that way it would kind of, you know, be easier for them to work together. Um, yeah, I think someone with a sense of humor, some, yeah. Yeah, I would say someone who's a strong woman, a uh, woman who loves kids, who's uh, uh, outgoing, and who maybe has kids or or maybe that being an option of some sorts. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that all sounds good, but we'll, we'll hope that... Uh... Well, hope that you find someone like that. I know, and probably someone who's, you know, got it figured out. Someone who can multitask, because he has trouble multitasking. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, I mean, yeah. no offense, men out there, but you know, women are known for being great multitaskers. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true, and I think most men that I no would agree with that would admit that they do not multitask well yeah yep, agreed yeah if they don't admit it then they're probably in denial i mean nothing against them. <laughs> but but, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that's what i've seen that's what i've seen yeah, yeah. um yes yeah, there, there, there are some more questions coming in here so now um audrey weaver she's asking um <laughs> do you want are you, do you watch yourself on screen? And that's actually a good question because I know some actors do not like to watch themselves and they even avoid it. And some really like to do it. So, um, I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I get more squeamish when I'm watching myself with other people. If I'm watching myself on my own, I, I really, I can, you know, watch it for what it is. I can kind of, you know, break it down. Like, oh, okay, that was pretty, that was pretty good. Like I can watch myself and like give myself props for the good work I've done or be like, you know what, that could have been better, but oh, that scene was good. So, you know, oh yeah, that's what, or I'll watch and be like, oh yeah, I remember that was going on when I, when we were shooting this or like, it'll remind me of certain things. So I don't know. I think, I think personally, I think it's important to uh, watch yourself or to see your work because I don't know what our work is such a big part of our life that I, to me, it's, it's kind of like um, a big chapter of my life. So to negate or to ignore that is kind of feel like I'd be ignoring a part of my life in a way. I mean, I'm not, I'm not at home watching myself on loop or anything like that, but, but I, I, I will watch everything I've done at least once. Just to at least know what the heck everyone is talking about, you know, when they're talking about my work. Okay. Well, that, that's good. I, I think, because I think that now, of course, I realize I'm not an actor, but I think that watching, I would think that at least being willing to watch yourself it's a good way of seeing, you know, how did it really come across? How could it be better? So I think that's good. But I can understand um, when I watch these interviews back with uh, that, because right. <laughs> and I watch them with my parents. It is a little bit like okay, it's but 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 it doesn't bother me too much. But it is that feeling of being self conscious. So I said, yeah, you know what it is? It's just like accepting yourself for for what is and. You know, people are, and we always critique ourselves way worse than anyone else does. Uh, and I also think that, you know, you just got to ex accept for what it is. You're alive, you're breathing, you live in a, in a great place. And that in itself is a gift. So, and I also, you know, watching myself, I also enjoy seeing uh, what went on in the editing room because what we've done which is one of the reasons why I like to watch it. What we did in the room can be so different than how they edited it. And then with the music added on and, and every, and people's reactions, like it gives you an, a whole, and editing can truly be magic. Like you can take something that is horrible and make it um, award-winning just through editing, honestly. So that is pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I think I've actually heard that because I've heard that you, you want, that the editor can kind of make or break you. I have heard that um, from other actors because yeah. sometimes the editing can, there are times where I know the editing can really, 
can make it not make it make it not as good. So you so you want to hope that you have a really good editor, and if it's an yeah, editor that really and, and, and I'm sure that you theater school. I'm sure you always, they, I remember in theater school they told me they're like if there's one friend you need to make on set it's the editors, <laughs> and I was like fair enough. I mean, unfortunately, we don't really get to see them very often because they're always in some dark cave somewhere editing our face but then you meet them at like the rap party and they're like cindy and you're like oh my god who are you and they're like i've been watching your face for the last like six months and you're like oh i'm so sorry <laughs> you know yeah. right right um so now going back to uh date my dad um yeah. now i know you can't tell us how the season ends i'm not asking for a spoiler as far as that goes mm -hmm. But are we going to have some kind of resolution? Is there going to at least be a resolution? Are we going to be left hanging at the end of this, the season? Or are we going to have a res resolution? Or is it going to be kind of a mixed bag? What are we looking at? Um, there's a little bit of a resolution. But it also will be very interesting when we find out that there may be a season two. Uh, we haven't found that out yet, but I, I had spoken to Nina before the season was over because she already had to start thinking about a season two, if there would be, just to submit some ideas and things like that. And uh, she already knew how this second season would start. So um, knowing that and knowing how we ended the first season, uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, there'll be a couple resolutions, but you know, you can never be too sure anytime anything happens. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think what will be nice is you'll see a little bit more of my relationship uh, with as a friendship with with Barry Ricky's character and how you know she tries to help uh, she tries to help him along the way and. You'll, and there's a new character coming in to the show. His name is uh, Bjorn, but we call him Thor uh, on the on the show. His name it's played. His name is Victor Zink, uh, who plays uh, Thor, aka uh, Bjorn. And his character works at the gym. He's amazing. So he brings a really cool dynamic into the show as well. So that's something to look forward to. And. Um, so yeah, I think I think what's going to happen is as the end of the season comes along, there's going to be a lot more dynamic and a lot more stuff going on. You know, the beginning of any first season is just kind of like introducing what's going on, showing the conflict. But as the season unravels, it's really going to start getting a little bit more intense. And uh, you're going to, yeah, you'll start to feel some things happening. But again, oh, I, can't, I hate not being able to tell. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um... We actually, I think, I think we actually, I what? I was just gonna say we actually have a really special person that uh, joined the audience. I was I looked down. I was like, oh my goodness! I just um, saw that Andrea said right, hi. Right? Yes. Yeah, like wow. Yeah. So so that's cool because she was part of the group. She was she she got to be in my very first broadcast, and she was so nice. And so that's oh, nice. Love, that she, love she Andrea. She's amazing. Yeah. She 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 is. Yeah. Um. So uh, glad. So Andrea, so glad that you stopped by. That's great. That thank you so much for that. And um, so how how do you're you're mentioning season two? Mm -hmm. How can we as the viewers help secure a season two? The best way. The best way. Was, I mean, what you you have always been so great at doing, which is supporting us, promoting. Um, you know, hashtagging, date my dad, um, anytime you have anything to say about the show, specifically on Friday nights, 9 Eastern, up TV, or in Canada, uh, on the W Network, Tuesday nights at 9. Um, and so that, that would be the best way, promoting it, talking about it to your friends, watching it, PVRing, DVRing, whatever, whatever you call it. Um, and that's really just the best way nowadays. Social media is so important. It's so important to everything and anything like, you know, people get hired because of social media. People 
you know, that shows are picked up for other seasons because of fans. And honestly, shows wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you guys watching. So that is a huge component. And the support and the love that I've gotten and the show's gotten is so overwhelming. And it's so incredible. And every time I read every message, like, you know, you get one odd random person that's negative, And like, I, I don't even like, I don't even pay attention to that because it's so not worth it. And I'm like, you know what? If you have nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Or go do something else. Or go talk to someone who cares because it's not here. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, I, I think the best way is honestly just watching the show, sharing it with your friends. Because we all know people that would love a show like this. And like you mentioned, there's just not a lot of this kind of content on. So that's the best. That would be the best thing to do for sure. Right. And right to Up TV. Right to up to the and tell them we want another season. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, because I, I I know that um, I know that there that even even though there are not a lot of people tuned into this broadcast, I mean I know that you know I know that there's a lot of viewers of of the show and that they want a season two. I mean, yes, you know, like yeah, you know, we wanted a season two. I think before the show was even here uh, in fact i think that you guys and up tv did such a good job of promoting the show before yeah. it even i even agree aired. i agree actually my uh, my friend was on a virgin airline flight uh like i think it was a couple days before the show aired and she saw a commercial like on the virgin flight for day my dad and she's like i was sitting there on my seat and all of a sudden i'm like there's my there's cindy she's like wow 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 you know that famous line that i said and she was like, that was you. And I was like, yes, amazing. You know, so it's it's stuff like that that's so, so enjoyable. And it, yeah, and Up TV really did a great job. I mean, this is their first scripted series. Um, so that's pretty, I mean, that's of its kind anyway. And so I think it's nice as well because they also air Heartland, which is another show that I was on. So that's really nice. A lot of people can see my you know, my familiar face on Heartland as well as on Date My Dad and uh, and A Puppy for Christmas aired on Up TV as well. So oh, yeah, they've been oh, yeah. so supportive and you know, just like Hallmark, they Hallmark and Up TV has been so good to me and they really create incredible family content. And I, I listen, I wouldn't have half, like most of my career has been family content. I'm so, so happy and grateful about that. I'm so sorry, James wrote something. He's like, uh, I always hashtag up TV. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I, I, always, I always try to remember to do, to, to, to at least tag it or hashtag because I know that's really Yeah. Cool. So, that, definitely. Um, I know that also what was um, mentioned. Um, is this the first time that you've gotten to work with kids? I wasn't exactly uh, other. I mean, to work that closely. I know that you had your uh, a small role on When Calls a Heart. I don't really know if you got to work with kids so much on that. Um, I just got to meet them in. Uh, I got to meet them, and but yeah, I didn't really have any direct um, scenes. I got had the scene when I came out of the carriage. Uh, but yeah, that was about it. I didn't have any direct scenes. Have I worked with kids? Yeah, I guess on, on, uh, Heartland a little bit. Um, Jessica Amley was, who, uh, she, who played Mallory. She was only, I think 12 or 13 when she started the show. And so that was, that was awesome. You know, there's something about kid actors that's so special uh, they're, first of all, they're way, they're way beyond their years. Like, they're just like old souls in like these small bodies. <laughs> so, but I, um, but you know, I, I really enjoy them. I'm a kid at heart personally, so I always connect really well and I, I love to have fun and I love to be silly and they do as well. And Zanina, Zania and Lila and Audrey are so there, there's no competition. There's no weirdness between them. They're honestly, they act like sisters. And I know that they've hung out like outside of work as well. And they, 
and you know they they invited me to but then it got canceled one time and I was like oh I was gonna go like I, I really wanted to go because they're so lovely and they're so much fun and that Audrey's such a little spitfire and 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 Zania is such a talented singer and uh, and Lila knits all the time in between scenes she is an avid knitter really really talented um and all their moms uh, Zania's sister comes to set with her because they're under 18, but, uh, their moms and the sister are so lovely and they're a part of the cast. They're a part of the crew as well because they're there every single day that they are. So they're part of the family too, which is kind of special, but you get to see, you know, where they, why they're such lovely human beings is you get to meet their parents and they're not like show moms or they're not you know, anything like that. They just sit there and they're like, yeah, whatever, just another day. And, and, uh, and I, I find that really special and I, I really respect that a lot. And then that also shows you why they're such strong women is you get to meet their strong female influences, their moms. And, you know, my mom is, is a very strong influence in my life. And, and I, I have such a, I, I always have a soft spot for moms because, you know, you guys just work your butts off. So <laughs> dads too, by the way, dads too. And that's actually one of the things I love about Date My Dad is that Ricky Cooper is such a great role model for single dads or dads who show up. Because I got to tell you, they, they don't get enough props in a world that, you know, there are some dads out there that aren't present, but there are so many great dads that are. And I... I think that that's amazing and like keep up that good work because you you deserve it and all kids deserve to have great dads because they're just as important as great moms. Right. Right. Well, and of course he's he's got it he's got it tough because he's got three girls. He has no son. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's going through all the the puberty stuff with them. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, so so yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, that Ricky, Ricky Cooper, he is awesome. I mean, that 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 character is awesome. Barry Watson plays him so well. I mean, it's it is it, it is fantastic. Um, so I know the question's been asked, and in fact, <laughs> um, uh, now James, I've not been ignoring you. I've been getting to it because I know he's. <laughs> so I want to let him know I'm not ignoring you. Uh, of course, we want to know what what other works you have coming up that you can mention um yeah i uh i have a movie called betting on the bride that i did um i think it's gonna be hallmark um and that's uh that was so much fun it's with uh, carissa lee staples and she plays my sis well i play her sister um and it's another kind of bridal movie but really, really funny, uh, really heartwarming, and and also a very strong female cast. And um, yeah, so I've got that coming out. I'm not sure the dates. I'm I'm really not sure of. But of course, on my social media, I will advertise the crap out of it when time when when the time comes. So I have a betting on the bride. Then I have a runaway Christmas bride that I just did with Ion, and that I'm assuming will be out sometime at Christmas time, probably December. Uh, and then the last thing I just did is called The Ranch, and that is a Mar Vista movie, which is the same company that did A Puppy for Christmas. And I'm again, I'm not sure which, it could be Hallmark or TV, or I'm not sure yet. Uh, and that is called The Ranch, and uh, potentially changing the title though. So. Uh, not a hundred percent sure, but Kevin McGarry plays in that with me and he is on Heartland now as well. We never got to be on the show at the same time, but he is a, a, a cast member. This is his third year now. So, and he was so lovely oh, and we have the same birthday, which was so funny. I know. What are the chances? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. March 18th. So we have the, the same birthday. So that was really cool. And uh, so again, that one I'm I that that one is going to be out in the fall because it's supposed to be done by end of September. So I'm assuming it'll be out sometime in the fall. But again, I'll be advertising those um, as they come. 
Um, so yeah, it's been a really, really incredible busy year for me. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just so happy and excited about everything. I feel so grateful. And you know, the best part it is, is not only do I get to play really fun characters, but the people I get to work with, it's, I, I was telling that, you know, there's circumstances on sets aren't always perfect, but if the people you work with are amazing, that makes all the difference. It's like, it's like anything, right? Like, you know, you can be having a bad day, but if you're in good company, what does it matter if you got a flat tire in the road? Cause you're with a, you're with someone you love. So that's all that matters. Right. Right. I, I, I agree with you on that. Definitely. Um, yeah. uh, so I guess the question's coming up. What movie is it that has the skiing? That's a, um, um, runaway Christmas bride. Oh. Yes. All right. Cause I wasn't sure I was thinking, okay, I don't want to look back. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't sure which movie that was either. And we actually uh, shot that on a real, uh, you know, a lot of these Christmas movies, um, aren't shot with real snow. Uh, which is, you know, which is fine, but we actually shot with real snow on a mountain uh, called Mount Washington. It's just on the Vancouver Island. And uh, it was such a beautiful place, but there was so much snow, but it was, we were shooting there on a week where it was about like in 80 degrees or so, like hot, probably like 85. And we we're wearing like ski jackets and gloves and and the whole thing and i remember looking at travis milne who was my my co-star in that he i remember at one point he was off camera so he unzipped his jacket and i remember looking at his t-shirt and it was just like drenched in sweat <laughs> and I, I just remember thinking like oh my goodness this is this is i mean good problems but still very un, very uncomfortable but it's better than freezing i suppose so there's that yeah, because I, I know that people who filmed some spring movies in Vancouver um, when we had all, when there was all the snow back in January and February. Yes. Oh, I know, and they had to, and they were supposed to be filming. It's supposed to be springtime, and there's I snow. Know. And Vancouver never gets snow, which is this year has been so out of whack. But what can you do? It's Mother Nature. She she makes her own rules. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true um yeah. now are you I, I know it's listed in your imdb that you are in um what's the name of the show um is it somewhere be somewhere oh between? somewhere between yeah it's um, abc series. right and that i think is scheduled at least i had heard that scheduled to be out next month i don't know if that's true but i had heard it one uh, time you know i actually have no idea right like probably I know that they just about finished shooting. I think they finished la last week or they were finishing this week. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be pretty soon because they started in February, end of February, I think it is. Right. So yeah, probably, probably soonish. But oh my gosh, that is a show to watch. No kidding. The story, I mean, it's going to be very different than like, the Hallmark stuff, but it's going to be one of those shows that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. You're not going to know what's going to happen next. It is really cool. It's a really cool show. Right. I so many actors and so many talented people. Oh, I know. The cast list, it's like you look at the cast you. list and I mean, I couldn't get over the talent that is connected to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be a great show to look at. So I, I think you're like on a couple episodes, I think is what it, what yeah, it I'm said. Not, I'm in three episodes. It's just a nice, it's a nice like little cameo for me. Um, I, I was so grateful to have been a part of it and yeah, it's super, super exciting to, I can't wait. I honestly, as, and it was really, I mean, I can't even talk about any of it other than it's a show and I'm in it. <laughs> Right. I, I know. I, I, I would only um, get the scripts I was in. Like, I don't, I, there's so many holes in the story that I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to watching it myself. <laughs> you can see, how does my character fit in? I can yeah, imagine. Yeah. 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 Well, the, okay. Well, I, I think at least 
I had heard because I interviewed. Um, I have I haven't actually posted the interview yet, but I interviewed um, Aaron Craven, who's yeah. uh, and because he was the one who said, "Well, if you're asking about that show, I can't tell you anything. I don't want spoilers. I just want to promote it for you. It's not, you know, it's like I, I just yeah. want to say you're in it." And, I'm in it, and that's all I can say. <laughs> I know what he said. He said, "I can't say anything." I'm like it's okay. It's all right. It's yeah. fine. Thank you and, for asking. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because at least he had mentioned it's supposed to be next month. I mean, we'll see. You know, I know things change sometimes, but at least it's a big network show, and yeah. So, so and I know it's a go, so it's not like they're just going to all of a sudden say no. We're not, you know, no, we yeah, changed yeah, our yeah. mind. It's great to hear. That's a bonus for sure. <laughs> that is good. So that's that's something that we have to look forward to coming up uh, somewhat soon. Yeah, so absolutely. That, that'll be that'll be good. We'll be looking forward to that. Um, now, of course, the Hardys. Um, it was so great, and I know we mentioned it, but it was so great to see you in One Calls the Heart. That was <laughs> awesome. To, to have you join that cast and even though it was a couple episodes and your character wasn't that nice to begin with your character <laughs> eventually your character was good and yeah but you know what you gotta have you gotta have act characters that bring bring in some action because tv wouldn't be exciting nobody would watch if everything was like cookie cutter you know what i mean and i really i I hate to say it, but I really love playing characters like that. Like I love being the antagonist and bringing some drama to stories. And I know, and cause I know I'm not like that in real life. So it doesn't bother me. And, and I, and I think I play, play them pretty well because people get pretty fired up about it. So that's usually a good sign. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was, I, I had, Audition for One Calls a Heart a couple times, not that much, um, and I was really happy to get that to play that character. Um, I was sad that Andrea and I didn't get to work together, but uh, yeah, it was really nice. And I mean, I don't know if my character would ever come back. You know, you know, anything is possible. I would obviously totally be into that and and gladly go to to the show again. And getting to, to play on a period piece was so fun. I, I'd only ever done that, I think like once or twice before, but this was like the oldest I'd gone. So that was really, really cool to get to um, try on those costumes. And they actually had most of my costumes tailored to my body, which is what they mostly do. Um, yeah, and so the, the costume designers are incredible on that show. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Aaron is lovely. Lori is amazing. Um, yeah, no, again, no. The thing, one of the number one things I love working, and you know, my best friend Sarah Smith and I were actually just having a walk yesterday, and we were talking about this. We we're talking about Hallmark, and we're like, you know, what the best thing about Hallmark is, is every time I work on one of their projects, and she was saying the same. It is one of the funnest, most enjoyable experiences. Like everyone on set is awesome. The crews just know what they're doing. It's like a well-oiled machine. The producers are great. They just come in, they make these movies or these TV shows, they leave. It's like, it just works. And I really respect how well they execute things and how they make them happen and how easy it is because that's not the case for a lot of things. And I think that they've really figured out a formula that works well. And that's, that's such a, a great thing that they, that they have. And that is a wonderful experience for someone like me. Right. I, I could not agree more. I mean, I mean, I know I've not been on a set, a Hallmark set or anything, but, yeah. but I have heard what, what you're saying is exactly times, from, yeah. from every actor, every, cast member crew member i hear it uh it's it's it is ama an amazing thing that that hallmark hallmark has going and, and yeah so, absolutely yeah. Yeah. and that's why they just keep growing and growing and there's such a big market for what they do people love it and again it, go, it comes back down to the same thing up tv is doing it's like creating content for families because they've gotten forgotten along the way you know so that's why it's working so well 
And then, of course, we've gotten to see you on Haley Dean also. Haley yeah. Dean History. I, I was so excited because I knew you were on the first one. And then to turn around, it's like, oh, they put her on the second one, too. I, was I know. So you know what? That, was, that was actually unexpected for me as well because I, I when I originally did the first one, which was the first one they ever did. Uh, I didn't know that they would ask me to come back. It was kind of like an open-ended sort of thing. Um, and so when I got the call, I was working on Date My Dad and uh, for the second one. And my agent called me and told me that they wanted me to come back. And I was like, of course, I would love to come back. And, you know, the, the producers of Date My Dad were awesome and Haley Dean and we were able to make it work in my schedule which was lovely and you know it was nice to just like to just get back with the same director and same pretty much the same cast other than a few new people obviously a new villain and all that kind of thing but uh yeah it was so great seeing kelly uh kelly and i went for dinner one night like she's just i don't know i i i all i feel I, all i can say is lovely things about everyone i work with apparently but i i truly feel so lucky like i get to work with amazing people and and kelly is probably in one of the most down to earth people i've ever worked with like hands down just a good human being who's a great talented actress who just shows up has fun grateful for what she does and is a great family woman she's got her priorities straight and i really i really dig that about her yeah I, and she's hilarious it's funny because she plays a lot of dramatic stuff but she is so funny i love it i love i think i get along best with people that have such great sense of humor because i at least because they don't take themselves so seriously and i think that that's one of the great things i love about barry and date my dad and then one of the things i loved about kelly too is that she's just like always ready to just like you know kind of like riff raff with with me right right and so do you have you heard whether they're going to do any more Haley dean mysteries um i think they're supposed to um it's definitely i think it's supposed to be an ongoing series but i don't know uh, when they're going to be shooting them, or I, it's, I guess it just depends on a lot of availabilities and things like that and scripts. Uh, but again, if there's another one, I don't know if I would be in it, but of course I would, I would definitely be a part of it if they asked me to. So. <laughs> right. And I'm assuming that you haven't heard any more about whether there'll be a sequel to Unleashing Mr. Darcy. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I, I, again, I can't really say too much, but I definitely heard some positive things in that regards, but I haven't been contacted in reference to scheduling or hiring or anything like that. So I definitely think there is, there is an Unleashing Mr. Darcy 2 floating around in the universe somewhere, which has been uh, talked about um definitely seriously talked about but uh we haven't shot anything and i haven't been personally contacted yet so it's not in the wheelhouse right now but i wouldn't close the chapter on it is what i'm saying that sounds good well i i, 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 I don't want to be i don't want to be 50 doing unleashing mr darcy too <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oh, but I bet you'll look amazing at 50. I mean, my goodness. you. <laughs> I, I mean, with Raquel, I'll get some of Raquel Welsh's secrets. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so see, now we have to have a season two so you can go back and get all those secrets from her and say, there you go. Well, yeah. we got to get a season two so that, so, that Cindy, so, so Cindy can get all those beauty secrets and she can keep looking and yeah, she'll be just as amazing and she can keep going. At 80, she can still still make all those movies for us, right? Right? Totally. That's what we'll be going for. You know what? At 80, why not? Probably be have some new dogs though, that's for sure. I don't know that they'll last that long. <laughs> that's true. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Um well well that well well I know that 
that I know that it can happen as far as there being a sequel because it wasn't that long ago that I don't know if you've heard about All of My Heart, if you've heard it, if you know about that, that Hallmark movie, have you? No. Uh, but um, All of My Heart was a movie that because of the fans and because of people connected with it, because that, that was uh, Brandon Elliott and Lacey Chabert. Um, oh, okay. They, years ago and it was a big big deal i mean we pushed we fans kept pushing we want a sequel we want a sequel we want a sequel uh -huh. a sequel is actually going to happen and so they're actually going to shoot they're planning to shoot a sequel um either late summer early fall really? something like that that's so awesome so that took a couple years of us this is the power you guys have so, you know what i mean it's uh you guys just have to keep requesting things and that's all it takes you know some positive reinforcement that's right that's you, you never but know i know unleashing with the a lot so that's for sure right so so maybe we just have to keep working for another year or so get everything lined up and and um i mean i i know the author's on board i know she's she, she's oh. she, she's to it. Totally on, on board she is so lovely and I hope she can make another cameo in the second when when and if we shoot it. So that would be pretty cool. Right, right. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask you. So now you're finally a part of the comedy series, which is something that you have really wanted to do for so long. Yeah. Um, is this something? Uh, are you going to ever get to a point where? Maybe you write your own comedy series, uh, direct it, star in it, all, you know, kind of do it all, or is that something you're thinking about? Um, yeah, I, I definitely would like to dabble in other things other than acting. I think um, writing uh, is, I have a couple friends of mine, uh, Elise and Devin, we started writing uh, sketches together. Uh, and we put that a little bit on hold because we got busy, but I know that we're going to probably get back into it. And I think maybe directing, I think producing is something I would really like to get into, actually. Um, that's what my, my boyfriend does. He's in producing, and I, 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 I would really like to dabble in that. And I think that I have a lot of great ideas, but I also am a very organized person. I feel like I'm a, a very big mover and a shaker sort of thing. And I think that that, I think producing is incredibly, because you really start from the beginning and you're there till the end. And the reason things come about is because of pr producers and production. And so that's absolutely something I'm really interested in right now. It's cool because the, uh, the producers of The Ranch that I just worked it with, Good Soldier Films, they are a uh, director-producer combo together, a married couple, uh, Brigitte and Andrew. And I was really, really passionate and fascinated by what they did. And it was actually really nice to work with them and see, and Brigitte was the producer. And she was just so awesome and worked really hard and just, they delivered and they made a great product. and. You know what, she, they actually really planted a seed in me to explore the behind the scenes a lot more, and I'm really excited to do that. So it's very very much in the early stages, but it's something that I'm starting to, to kind of really think about and to start to pursue. Okay, well that's good. I was, I was kind of, yeah, I think I could see you as, as a producer. I actually could see you eventually, you know, maybe you're not at, at that point yet, but I could see you eventually directing too. I don't know. I just, I, I think. I would love, I mean, I would love to direct. Absolutely. I, uh, that's, that's definitely on my list. You know, there's so many wonderful things. And I think as, as a, as a woman too, um, there's different, uh, there's not a, enough female directors, but I think it's becoming more and more. And I think Wonder Woman is a great example of, of, how great that can be. So yeah, I, I'm definitely open to the opportunity. I think that anything is possible and I, I, I think the possibilities are endless. So I'm, I'm totally open and excited about it. Right, well, well that's, that is good. Cause I, I, I just keep thinking that, that 
it's it's really cool for me because I've I, I realized I didn't watch in Heartland, but I've been watching you then since Cedar Cove, and it's just been neat to see the progression of your career and to see all these opportunities come your way, uh -huh. and. And, and I, I'm just always at what I get so excited um, when there are these people like you that I just, that I follow so closely and I, I watch everything that you're in and, and um, it's so neat to see all these opportunities come your way because it's like, I know how hard you've worked to get there and. Yeah, you know, it's, and I appreciate you saying that because it is, it, it's, it's, it's so easy for people to just watch the final product and not and just see all of the greatness of it. And it is all great, but it's definitely so much work. And you know, there's a lot of ups and downs in every actor's career. And of course, most of social media just highlights all of the great parts. And 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 because, you know, with reason, it's incredible when it's going really well. But there are moments where it's not going so so great. But you know, nobody really talks about that part. But I, you know, it's people like you and any fan that like any time people are busy and the great things are happening, it's just nice to know that the support is there. And that is probably my favorite part of the Hallmark community is the support. I mean, you guys are just like above and beyond anything else. I'd probably compare it to the sci-fi community actually, because the sci-fi community is huge and they will support you to the till the end and i think that that has been the greatest gift as far as um as hallmark you know uh hallmark any kind of family uh show has has taught me yeah well the, i i can say i know that the hallmark community has been wonderful for me because they uh, and and the Hardys. I mean, now that you, now that now the Hardys, the, the, you probably get all the support from the Hardys as well, because yeah, totally. Because the Hardys are like this big. They, I mean, they're they're a big part of that Hallmark community, and they they are a force to be reckoned with. I, oh yeah, they are. They are very present, and they're very protective. And I get it. You know, I get it. And that's why when I showed up, they like loved my they like love to hate my character but like there was a lot of love there so it's all good um but yeah i mean the hardys have welcomed me with open arms like from the minute i started advertising it and they were so excited because a lot of them recognized me from other things and so i think that when you have someone who enjoys your work and then you show up on their favorite show it's like it's like it's it's heaven really right right yeah, actually, uh, yeah, shout out to, uh, Kate, I think it's Kate Whitley says, Hallmark, Hallmark fans is the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, Kate. They are. Yeah. Yeah. And I can, I can assure you that um, Hallmark fans will come and watch this interview once it gets reposted and everything. Well, I mean, they will sure. come. And, no, I'm and, you know what? It's Friday. It's five o'clock, people. And. I don't know what it's like where everybody else is living, but in Vancouver right now, it is like there isn't a cloud in the sky. Like it is, I'll give you a little sneak peek. Ooh. Pretty nice out there right now. <laughs> Pretty beautiful. So that's that's the view I'm looking at right now. Wow. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's nice of a break from the rain, definitely. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, this year was definitely being ready. That is for sure. Right, right. Well, I think I'm just making sure that we've gotten to all the uh, questions that were posted, and I, I mean, it's been, it's been great. Uh, I so appreciate Cindy that you, you know, you you take the time to to do this because I know we we covered a lot of ground and we've actually picked up viewers. It's been something to watch the viewers. At one point we had three, and now we have eight. We're ending like. Uh, we've we've uh, more than doubled the, our viewers. So like, <laughs> I mean, that's really cool um, because, uh, like you said, it's Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and yeah. and so so um, so anyway, I just I thank you for taking the time to do this, and um, you know it's been it's been great chatting with you. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Yeah, and, it, honestly, it's been my pleasure. I'm so happy to. Um, talk about date my dad because again it was such a it's such a passion project for me and 
I'm, I'm in and I'm really happy to touch base with all of the other Hallmark stuff. And again, thanks to you for always being such a big supporter of mine and a big Hallmark supporter. And I know that you're kind of, it's funny, I, I talked to, to Chris, who's my boyfriend, and I told him, I'm like, oh, I have my interview with Ruth Hill today. And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, Ruth. Because I always, it's funny, I refer to you as like the godmother of Hallmark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard that one, okay. <laughs> Because I just, I feel like you kind of, I feel like the, the community is there, but you kind of like bring, you like rally the troops together. You're like, all right, everybody, we're doing this. And like, it's just like, it's really cool to to, ha to have someone like you. And, and I think, um, I think there's a couple of you, but you're the one who stands out for me. And uh, anyway, but thank you for, for taking, for making this happen and, uh, and sharing it with everyone. That's awesome. Well, well, thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, it's, I, I, so now I have, a, now I have a new title. I haven't heard that one. So that. Their homework. There you go. Uh, as, as said by Cindy Busby. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. oh, I'll remember that. This is really cool. Well, um, and, um, and for those of you who might've missed most, cause I, cause I noticed, uh, like, like you know, Kate's worried that she's missed most of this. This will be put all together, so that people will be able to sit down and watch it. Um, I it'll be, you know, I'll edit out the beginning, and we'll make it look really good. So don't worry if you know if you missed it, you'll still get to rewatch it. We'll Ooh, we'll have and I'll, I will retweet as well and yeah. share on my yeah. Facebook page. So yeah, so so it will it will be there. It won't be going away. Um, It'll 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 be back up uh, probably by sometime early tomorrow, and uh, we'll get we'll get it. So so perfect. All right. Well, thank Cindy. you so much. Um, enjoy day my dad tonight. Uh, every Friday on Up TV at nine Eastern, and then in Canada, the W Network on Tuesdays. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, I know that I'll be watching, and I'm sure that a lot of other people will be watching. So. Thank you so much, Cindy. It was a lovely Thank get to you. talk to you. And well, I love talking to you. Thank you for everything. Bye, everybody who tuned in. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.